All right, so you saw the title of the video, which means there's no point in beating around the bush. I'm breaking up with Fujifilm. And it's sad because I really do like what they're doing as a company. I like them a lot. I have a lot of Fuji gear. I bought in hard. Their cameras are fun. They're compact. They're interesting. They have cool design. But for the scenarios that I was using them in, as in like family stuff, vacation stuff, traveling stuff, just as my general everyday carry camera, I found that it's just not the best option for me. And something I want to make clear right from the get-go is that this isn't a video prompting you to sell all of your Fujifilm stuff right now. Not at all. This is just me recounting my experience with the brand and why I've decided to move on to something else. What I'm trying to say is that this isn't going to be a diss track. This isn't going to be technical. This isn't going to be a spec showdown. This is just meant to be a dialogue about why I've decided to leave the Fujifilm ecosystem in favor of Sony, more specifically the Sony A7C Mark II. So let's start from the start. Why did I choose Fujifilm in the first place? It was the compact size, the built-in film simulations, and it was a very affordable system for the camera bodies and the lenses. I was traveling a lot at the time and I wanted to find something smaller and just more convenient, more discreet to carry around as opposed to my, my main professional gear that I use for my paid work, which is my Canon equipment, which is big, it's heavy, and after a day of carrying that around, you can feel it. So my first Fujifilm camera was the X-T3 30 Mark II, just tiny. I had the silver bodied version. That camera was awesome. It got me hooked and I eventually upgraded to the X-T5 and even the X-H2S because I was intrigued by the video capabilities of that camera. I just kind of went all in. And not to get ahead of myself, but looking back, if I would have just stuck with that X-T30 Mark II, I probably would have never even found my way to this Sony camera because that thing was perfect. It was so small. I had like a 26 megapixel sensor. It looks cool. It made me want to shoot photos. But unfortunately, like, many photographers, I have that curiosity with better gear, which is why I eventually upgraded to the X-T5. And at that point, I had lost the plot. It was a bigger body. It was more expensive. What am I doing? But the pictures and the experience with that camera were great and still are great. It's right here. A big selling point of Fujifilm cameras are the film simulations. They're built-in looks that look like old film. So when you shoot, they are baked into your JPEGs. So you can get a really cool look straight out of camera. And then you can take that to the next level and you can program in some recipes, they call them, which are just modifying certain things about those film stocks to get a specific look. And there's all these cool services like Fuji X Weekly that showcase all these different recipes that you can put in your camera. And it's actually a lot of fun to try and find one that you like. And a big draw of these film simulations and the recipes are that they can potentially cut down on the amount of editing you need to do after the fact. You might just like the JPEGs that are coming straight out of the camera, send them to your phone or your computer, and you are good to go. No editing required. Unfortunately, that was not my experience. I found myself never being satisfied with the results I was getting from the film simulations. And in my opinion, they're really nothing more than instant gratification because they look so awesome on your camera's LCD screen. But when I would send them to my phone, or my computer, I just felt like they were underwhelming. They just aren't as punchy when you send them somewhere as they are on your screen. The best results I would get from the film simulations were if I would send them to my phone and then touch them up just a little bit more, you know, like change some of the colors or something about the photo. And that kind of defeats the purpose to me. But from a purely shoot now and feel good about the photo perspective, the film simulations are awesome and they definitely do make you just want to go out and shoot more shots. There's no doubt about it. Another thing with the film simulations is that since they're baked into your JPEGs, I would shoot JPEG plus RAW, so both kinds of files. So if I like the JPEG, I could use that for whatever reason, or if I wanted to have a RAW file to edit it later, I always want to have that ability. It's just, it's ingrained in me as a photographer. But the problem with that then is I'm doubling up on my storage because I'd be making a JPEG folder and a RAW folder. And looking back, I just never really even went into the JPEG folder. So I could go and delete those, but I was just always thinking like, what if some of these JPEGs are actually really cool? And I just want to have less decisions in my photo work, especially when it's not meant to be work. It's just supposed to be a fun experience shooting. Once again, these are not problems with Fujifilm at all. These are just personal gripes. The film simulations are a major part of the Fujifilm experience, but 
in my case and in my experience using them, I just found out that I actually really like editing my photos. When it comes to ergonomics, Sony wins in this category and it's not even close. That's of course if we're just comparing the A7C2 versus the X-T5. The X-T5, is, this sounds harsh, but it's like borderline unusable without adding an additional grip. So I got this small rig one and small rig makes awesome products and you know you can use this on your tripod. It's a good grip, but it's an added expense. This grip has no depth whatsoever and it's really just not comfortable to use. On top of that, the X-T5 doesn't have the full flippy screen because it's it's not meant to be a video camera even though it has great video specs it has one of these that pushes out more classic style which is great I do I do like that but since it doesn't fold in I was kind of concerned about the screen so I bought a screen protector for this which is just another expense albeit a small one and like most people when I got the X-T5 I was very drawn to the retro dials where you could just dial in the shutter speed, the ISO, just a super, it's cool looking. And I thought that I would be into that, maybe slow down my shooting a little bit, but turns out I never use those dials ever. And there's plenty of dials on the X-T5 that allow you to use it like a more modern camera. And I enjoy that experience, but it just seems kind of a waste to have those dials and to not use them. I wish the X-T5 had a custom one through seven dial like the X-H2S, cause that thing is awesome. I wish all cameras had that dial. It's the best dial. And then there's the shutter release button on this thing, which looks great on here right now because this didn't come with the camera. I added this on there. Without a shutter button on here, these cameras look extremely weird and the shutter just kind of stinks. I really did not like the shutter button on here at all before I added this additional one. It almost looks incomplete without this button on it. It looks like it's just like shipped without it. It's, I don't get it. And maybe that's a more, uh, and maybe that's a retro camera thing. Maybe they were like that. I don't own any retro cameras, so I don't know. The main difference in the ergonomics and design of these cameras is that with the X-T5, I instantly felt like I needed to modify the camera to make it more comfortable for myself. Whereas the A7C2 is just pick up and, oh, I like that, let's go. And the key thing here above everything is that the A7C2 is smaller than the X-T5. This is a full frame camera and the X-T5 is a crop sensor camera and somehow this is smaller. It doesn't even make sense. And still while being smaller, it feels better in my hand, has a deeper grip. It just, it just fits my shooting style better. Fujifilm cameras look so cool, but this camera looks really cool too. And both of these kind of body designs, the retro-ish look, there's something about them that just makes you want to shoot more. But when it comes to the functionality of these two cameras in particular, the Sony, in my opinion, absolutely crushes the Fujifilm. Everything I ever heard about Sony's autofocus system is true. It's incredible, especially with whatever kind of AI wizardry they have going on in this. You just don't even have to think about that part of your shooting experience. It's going to get it right, especially in video. The menu system on the Fujifilm cameras is great if you're into controlling every single aspect of the camera because it gives you that option. It's overwhelming. You look through that thing and you don't even know where to begin. And when it comes to the Sony, I had always heard that they had this like difficult menu system to use. And I have heard that they must have just recently redone it and maybe it's only in a few other cameras. I had no problem navigating through their menu system right out of the box. It just, it was easy. So it's not a knock on the Fujifilm. If you want to take control of every little bit of your camera, you have that ability, but some of it seems a bit excessive to me. And I like that it's just not as much on the Sony. And the biggest functionality advantage of the Sony a7C2 versus the Fujifilm X-T5 or even the X-H2S is that it is a full frame camera, which means you're gonna get more depth in your images. You're gonna have better low light performance. And these Sony cameras are low light monsters with this dual native ISO they've busted out in some of these cameras. Some of them can see in the dark, it's unreal. And I wanna really quickly touch on video. I like both F-Log2 and S-Log3. I think they're both really fun to grade. I think there's more options out there if you wanna buy LUTs and, and such for S-Log3, but I have no problem with either of those. But low light video advantage definitely goes to the Sony by far. I don't know how to 
adequately say this. The Sony just feels like a more high powered computer. It just feels like a step up from the Fujifilm. So in the end, breaking up with Fujifilm is kind of like moving on from that person who is really cute, has a great personality, just really doesn't have a lot of flaws. Like your spirit just doesn't actually want to let them go. And then the Sony is the person you're moving on to and they're just incredibly attractive. They're really smart. They're driven to be the best. And they're a whole league above where you were at before. But your heart still hurts because you're not really leaving the other thing because it was bad at all. It's the complete opposite. It's great. You just found something better for you. And I found something better for me. Had I known about this camera before, uh, this series of cameras and how compact they are, I probably never would have gotten into Fujifilm in the first place. But I thought Fuji was just the king of compact bodies that were great for everyday carries. And I'm not saying they aren't. Just to me, I like this better. And the fact that the Sony is a full frame and the Fujifilm is a crop sensor, yet the Sony is still smaller, that's the game changer to me. Size is the prize in this equation, and that's a major part of why I've decided to move on to Sony. But Fujifilm absolutely changed the way I look at my photography. It injected some fun into it, whereas before, when I was just using my other stuff that I was doing all my paid work for, I didn't want to just take it out in public and walk around a city or walk around a trail with it. It felt like work. And I will always be a fan of Fujifilm's cameras and their lens, their whole system because of that. It's a really inspiring brand and I can't wait to see what they do in the future. I just don't know if I'll be going along for the ride with them. I definitely don't want to get rid of any of my Fuji gear, but it's it's just not practical to have it sit around if I'm not going to be using it as much. So if you're looking at either of these cameras or either of these camera systems, I can highly recommend both. I just personally prefer full frame cameras and that Sony autofocus is pretty dope. So thanks for checking out the video. Hopefully it gave you some insights if you're looking to make a decision similar to this. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Let's have a discussion. Did you make a similar switch or are you going the other way around switching from Fuji to Sony? Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so. And I'll see you next time. I guess I'm not totally leaving Fujifilm. I still have this Instax wide printer. This thing rules.